Yehova Malak Olam Olamot Yehova Malak Yami Rakis Yehova Gadol Makarian Tios Yehova Eronai Yehova Elohim Kurios Tios Panta Kreta Kurios Tios Pistos Elda et Yehova Yel Emona Yehova Ibas Leon Kurios, Otios, O Panta Kreta Basilios Basilion, Kai Kurios, Kurion Yehova Dabar Halal, Elohim Dabar Halal Yehova Elohim, Gadol Gadol Gebura El Elohim Israel, Isus Christos Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion Kurion Imahagion Panta Kreta Gadol Gadol Gebura Yehova Ishmal Kam Yehova Shamma El Nakum Yehova El Nakum Yapa Etsak Israel La Sheker Gava Gava Triembos Yehova Isus Christos Panta Kreta Gadol Gadol Gebura Mora Rosh Nasa Elohim Elohim Ile la e shalot, Yehovah Malak, Yehovah Malak, Olam Olam Ad, Yehovah Elohenu, Yehovah Ekad, Gadol Gadol Gebura. Zaan Logan, Ogar Tautios, Dulas, Desmios, Despotes, Dikayesune, Nisus Christos, Kurion, 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 Hagion, Hagion, Hagion. Numa Panta Kreta Gadol Gadol Gibra Derek Emuna Bakar Meshfat Shava The Megalogai of Yahweh Elilion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and ignorant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkano to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. We don't deserve anything else on this earth apart from the pure grace of the Lord our God, which He is constantly being poured down upon us. Though we are such sort of a rebellion in Him, yet God the Father gives us this great privilege to learn His mind, to know His will, though we are constantly providing Him with the standards of what you can call poison. We are not giving Him the food, though He has been hunger. We are giving him poison and we are giving him the things pertaining to be rubbish food. As he said in Matthew chapter 25, when I was hunger, when I was thirsty, it is what you righteous men who were into the right side called to be the sheep have fed me. But at the same time, the people who are not even named to be righteous, they that are to the left records the Bible. 
they came back not to feed him, not to clear his thirst, not to make up his life according to the standards of the word of Lord God. So there we look. If you are not able to clear the Lord's thirst, it is our life as good we are providing him with poison and rather than meat we are providing him stupid stuff on this earth. So dear brethren, it is the bona fide duty of every believer to make sure that when Christ our Lord of God is thirsty for the fifth phrase on the cross what he claimed, rather than blotting our names out of the book of life as Psalm 69 teaches to us, it is better for us to be alert about his will, about his plan, about his grace, rather than using this grace for our lustful patterns of the old sin nature on this earth. So dear brethren, use the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins through rebound so that you can come back and look and understand the marvelous glory of God the Father which he has given to us so that we could come back and learn every day the pale wonders of his glory because many people who have failed to understand about these great things in the Bible they have really become what we can call in simple terms vanity to the will of the Lord and since they become vanity to the will of Lord God the Father you can truly understand their life is not worthy for the Lord's plan so dear brethren is the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins through rebound and let's come back and continue what Lord God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's day to make the past into the praise of his glory in knowing his pile of wonders which he has reserved and kept for us on today's date we shall continue after this prayer infinitely divine holy father once again coming into the matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. We pray, Father, the help of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, constantly to lead us in the truth. Nothing we desire on this earth, Lord, apart from knowing your mind, learning to transform that into our life. As many people who have failed to keep up this, they have really not been that great testimony of yours on this earth. Yet, O Father, you have made with this this covenant so that we could learn and understand to be your testimony of you and we could all the time be your faithful slaves on this earth. So, Father, the things which are prepared and kept for us on today's state, in it we pass to the praise of your glory as we study them. We pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to challenge, to enlighten from this message and bless us for the glory. In Christ's name we ask sovereign Lord. Amen. The thinking of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, particularly in this great viewpoint of First Chronicles chapter 17, the prayer which David prays in the presence of Lord God the Father. He wants us to understand there are two things which God the Father could make up. So he says over here, O Lord God, there is none like thee. There is neither any God beside thee. And according to all that we have heard with our ears. So when God the Father says over here, there is none like him. We have been able to read this word emphasizing in comparison with 2 Samuel chapter 18 in the viewpoint of this woman of 1 Samuel chapter 18 the marriage over Meribah to Micah the word Micah meant to say who is like God. 
So here when David is emphasizing, there is none besides thee, O Lord, or who could be like you, O Lord, according to all that we have heard with our ears. You know, that's the great problem. You're not hearing with your ears today. But here he said, who is like unto thee? And the reason when he says, who is like unto thee, he knew very well that he wants to prove, emphasizing the point, that making disciples of all the nations on this earth, that's the only Lord of a God. People may talk about many things on this earth for practicing their religion terms and conditions, that they are their devotees. As such, you find the word for us in the New Testament as well, when Apostle Paul pens these words in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Having devotees, the word devotee, what we can look, it is the strong code number 2126, and also you have a strong code number 4576. So 2126 or 2152 strong code. This is what God the Father requires every believer to be Yusubiyan. These are the true dedicated devotees to the Lord. On the other hand, you are going to have one more section called as the people as Sebamai, that is, they adore, they show reverence, but these are religion-minded people. So the strong code number for it assigned is 4576. And the strong code number assigned for the people who are true devotees unto the Lord of a God, it is 2152, or it could be as 2162. But here we find the strong code number 2126, not 62. 2126 or 2152. So here the word Eulabes or Eusebian or having to show true reverence to God the Father. This is what here he says we have heard. Or who is like unto thee, Lord God? That's what we are failing today. We are not able to prove to the world, as Mikael, the word meant to say in 1 Samuel 18.20, which we read. The word meant to say over here, who is like unto thee, Lord? And David prays over here, Lord, you have blessed me with this, you have blessed me with that. But something far greater than David, we are having blessings today. The blessing of the completed canon scripture, which is your life, where you get more treasure, more peace or any sort of security on this earth which you can think. Apart from the knowledge of Bible doctrine on this earth, you are really a fool if you don't realize that the only security for any believer on this earth is first the greatest blessing than what David could pray in the presence of God the Father. The greatest blessing is that we have been given completed canon of Scripture. You're really not able to get that. That will be the only greatest blessing. You know, when you have been there in such way of life, you will just be away from every stupidity of this life. You will be still in the process of what we can call over here in this great chapter of Psalms, emphasizing the point that in 101, when you have been there in the experience of such great blessing in the presence of Lord God the Father, where with only the word of Lord God in the prayer of Paul Timah privileges is the only reason for your breath. You say as Psalms 101 verse 3 which says, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not the back unto me. Again the great chapter over here in Psalms chapter 73. Here you can find, beginning with verse number 23 and following, Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. You have holden me by my right hand. You shall guide me with thy counsel. 
afterwards receive me to glory this is the great verse in verse 25 psalm 73 whom have high in heaven but thee there is none upon the earth that i desire desire chapets chapets that's the point we the people ought to be so blessed in the completed canon of scripture that who is like God to be proven to this people is very, very easy because we have the divine revolution of the living word of God. The people who are calling themselves to be devotees, who are Sebomai rather than Yusabian, they go on for religion worship and they think. For them, they are also God. They are also having gods. And the Sebomai characters are great in number than the true Eusebian believers to Christ. Just look, the unbelievers in my country, India, how faithful they are towards the Sebomai relationship towards their gods. Christian will fail. As Joshua could say, me and my family, we shall serve the Lord God. In my country, India, they are so much religion-minded people, like some of my devotees to their gods, going to those respective gods of them. Though it is a span of one week of time, they go there along with their entire children that to barefoot, walking on the roads, having the things pertaining to their commitments towards their gods. These are great in Sabomai. If they could really be to know the truth and they could come to Christ, the elected ones, the Christians who have been there calling to be nominal on this earth, they would wake up. They would realize. At least they would have learned from this Sabomai process of life what they're going through on this earth and they would really make up to be dedicated ones to the Lord. And they would be Yusabian at least by looking upon the dedication of those unbelieving gods. It will be a great pain when you compare when God the Father teaches the lesson through the Rechabites in Jeremiah 35. He said, his father, Jonadab, addressed them not to drink, not to have a permanent home, till they they're continuing, but you people, I am a living Lord God to you. And you are not even able to follow my mandates. You know that comparison will certainly prick our hearts. The same thing, Sabomai category of the people, where with God the Father says, they may be reverence, they may be religion-minded people, they may be worshipping according to their own standards of life, but you, dear brethren, have been called not for such life. You have been called for the process of becoming the true life in Christ, which is called to be Yusubian, having to be good believer in the Lord God, but you are not able to do that. Why? Because there is wicked thing in your heart. You are loving the lustful patterns of the old sin nature of this earth. Therefore, the true fear of Lord God, what does he meant to say in Proverbs 8, 13? Departing from evil, because God the Father has all the counsel, all the wisdom, all the understanding, all the knowledge, and he has all the mastery called to be Gabor, where each and every believer can become now to be the true process of Lord God's representation, saying to the world, who is like my God? And that's where we are failing today, to show to the world, to prove to the world. You know what is like my God? When he uses this word over here in Second First Chronicles chapter 17 in verse number 19 and 20, when he said, who is like my God? He said, emphasizing the point, the thought process to be trained up or to be in the thinking of the disciple to the Lord. That's what who is like my God meant to say. The thought process what God the Father has given to us to reign like a disciple to Christ. Such a thought process he claims. Who is having such a thought process before the Lord God? Or who is having the gods of this world to have that thought process like a disciple? John 1.11 emphasizes this uh, call to be technon, whom they received. He gave the authority, exousia, to be called as technon. The word technon, discipleship program. And what is the discipleship program? It is called to be technon. It meant to say, daily take up your cross and become the will of Lord God the Father, looking upon the time, be as the Lord 
God's image on this earth. That's what you have been called. So he says, who is like my God? Do you think other gods have that process? What are the thoughts of men on this earth? He said, vanity. There is nothing more beneficial for, on the, or for the people on this earth because they find it vanity. The divine revolution, what we have, the infallible and inherent word of God in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, we are not relying upon the translations. In the pictographical representation of the Hebrew, it will simply teach you to carry your cross and become the disciple. If not, he said over there in Lamentations 3, emphasizing in verse 4, Lord, you have made me tired. The word tired or the bones getting old, it meant to say what? Your body is not a disciple to the Lord. And since your body is not a disciple to the Lord, you are tired. People may complain about body pains. People may complain about this and that. But the word of Lord God says, you are a tired person because you are not a disciple to the Lord. Then who is the person who is active, vigorous and alive to the Lord? The person who has been pursuing his life, growing up into grammatias, joined as a disciple. And afterwards, as grown up grammatias, going and making disciples of all the nations. So if your body is running in the blood of making to be disciples to the Lord God, he said, such is the one who is not tired. Like Caleb who could say, I am 85 years old, that I have in me the vigor of 40. The same thing what he emphasized in Isaiah chapter 40. The youth may fail, the young may vanish, but they that wait upon the Lord God will renew their strength like eagles. That's the same passage over here. The people who are not tired are the ones who have been using their body dedicated for discipleship program. So they don't get tired. But you find yourselves tired, saying because of sunstroke, because of this food, because of that food, because of this deficiency, that deficiency. No, your mind is not occupied in becoming disciple. Your mind is not occupied in making disciples. When you're becoming disciple, you grow up into grammatias. And as you grow up into grammatias, you don't stop there now. You're going to make disciples of all the nations. So the first, becoming disciple. Second, making disciples. If you don't have this process for you as love dub of your heart, or you breathe in and breathe out of your nostrils in your breath the, the breathing is becoming disciple breathe out making disciples love breathing this love be, make, becoming disciple and dub making disciples if you don't have this you're tired that's what we find over here in lamentations chapter 3 he said in verse number four, my flesh and my skin, you have made me old. The flesh should have been used for producing good news unto the Lord against any pressure. Your body should be renovated to the standards of the knowledge of Bible doctrine. The skin, he emphasizes your viewpoint and your head, should be all the time into the process of becoming Lord's mind. So he said, what you have made, my flesh and my skin, you have made me old. What is the meaning of the old? It should be translated to say as, you have made me to wear out. Wear out is nothing but to tired. That's very simple, dear brethren. You have made me to become old. Why? Your flesh is not using for the good news of Lord God. Your skin, which has to be the melodious tone for the people, or the thing which goes to be in the process of preserving your body as well as the soul and spirit till it could reach its perfection, that skin, which has to really protect you, it has become what? He said, old. People, by the virtue of age, they calculate old. But here, the Bible records whenever you find that age, he was son of 32 years old. He doesn't call he was old, but he said son of 32 or son of 42. That's what we find in the Hebrew. When he was 32 years old, you call in the English, but the Hebrew says he was son of 32 years. Or he was son of 42 years. That's it. Bible records you with the number. And it doesn't want you to be old. Because till you die, you go to have the same vigor and valor like Moses, 120 years old. He had in him that same great vigor and valor. 
120 years old he was, he had in him the same vigor and valor. His eyesight was not dimmed. Neither his flesh was abated. The same example with the man Daniel, what he can look. Considering the great life of Daniel, three times a day, kneeling down in the presence of Lord God the Father and doing the will of Lord God the Father. You know, those who are in Christ, they cannot be called as old. They renew their strength like eagle. Youth may perish and young may fail. The great passage, what many people know about Isaiah. Where with this great inspiration, when he's writing, he's writing to learn many great things in this life. He says, youth shall faint. Why they faint? The Hebrew word ya'ap meant to say what their viewpoint and their mouth is not matching to the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Therefore, what they become? They faint. And what they become? They become weary. You know, what is the meaning of weary? It is called they will never erect their life in the viewpoint of the thinking of Bible doctrine. They will never erect their life, never. In the viewpoint of Bible doctrine, they will never erect their life. They will never establish their life. So they become very, not because of the sunstroke, not because of the food, not because of the silly, stupid, diabetic, or what you can call to be your hypertensions or whatsoever. You know, you're fainted in your mind. Therefore, he says the great passage for us in this Hebrew, for this Hebrews, saying that, do not get faint in your mind. That's where you fail. Hebrews chapter 12, in verse number 1 and following, he said, Wherefore, when you see being compassed about such sort of a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And then he says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, the word finisher is called to be teleotes, meant to say what it is completed. The man who led the life is giving an example to walk in his footsteps. 1 John 3, 1 John 2, 6, because we are having in us the sperm of Christ. 1 John 3, 9. So, 1 John 4, 4 emphasizes, greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world. Therefore, you don't have any alibis or excuses to be claimed before his presence. Therefore, he says now, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is sat down, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now he looks over here. Consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be varied and faint in your minds. Where it happens, you go to become sick and you go to become faint, which is called to be having to be relaxed, weakened, or the person who has been enfeebled through exhaustion, or to grow, to become grow, to to grow weary, or to become weary. Where you become, he says, it is in your soul, suke, which is called to be your uh, uh, word over here, meant to say for you as mind. But the Hebrew says the soul, the the meaning of the word soul, which is nothing but dear brother. It is what it has been constituted to use the right one, wherewith it goes to give an aid offered to God. So you attain the highest end and secure eternal blessings. So the soul regarded as a moral being designed for everlasting life. So do not go to fail in your soul, which has been given for you to be the great process in this life. Therefore, he said, the youth shall faint and they vary. They never erect the structure in their soul, the mind, what you can call soul, to constitute themselves to be assigned to God's work.
So youth may fail. First of all, they faint because the viewpoint is not in association with Bible doctrine. They go to weary. Never they erect a structure according to the viewpoint of Bible doctrine. And he said, young man shall utterly fail. You know, the reason why you fail in your life, people may think many reasons. And many people go on to be depressed, saying that I missed my first love, or I missed my great opinion or great opportunity in my job, or I have, done, I have lost this, so I become a depressed man I have been no dear brethren the great depression utterly depressed or they shall utterly fail the strong code number 3782 emphasizing twice it is called to be kashal the meaning of kashal or is stumbling or staggering meant to say what it is what your thought process in your life is not grammatious and your thought process besides being not grammatious it is not able to make up your life to go and make disciples of all the nations that's where you utterly fail. The English says for us utterly failed. But the Hebrew says kasal, kasal. Who? The young man. The young man who has been called over here as bakor. What do they do? It's an examination to determine the choicest. Choosing the best one. Because the thought process in the body has been fortified according to the renovated standards of Bible doctrine. But this young man who failed to carry the yoke of the Lord God at their young age, Lamentations 3.27, they utterly fail. They become kasel, kasel. What is the meaning of kasel? Their body is not grown up into grammatias. Therefore, the thought process never it will come to go and make disciples. How to illustrate that? You are thinking that you have reached the age of youth but you do not know the real purpose of you or female or a boy is that afterwards the parents except you have the gift of celibacy or a eunuch what you make you have a tendency for marriage why because you need to go and have your progeny to be continued that's the same promise what he said over there in first chronicles chapter 17 there will be always a light or a male one to be occupying your throne because I teach them. I teach them my covenant. I teach them my testimony. And there will be always a male to continue your throne. You know, these things are been very, very important for us. So what you do after getting married? You look for your progeny. Progeny to carry out to the next generation. The point for Kasal over here, why this Angman they have failed, the logic is very, very simple. They have failed the intention of becoming Kasal unto the Lord because their body is not associated to be like a grammatius unto the Lord. Their body is not having the thought process like the Lord. Their body is not able to become what you can call as disciple to the Lord. So they're getting, they don't even know why they've been born, but they do not even understand when they're grown up, they shall also have a progeny, except in the case of having people to be many rich or having a lot of riches on this earth. They don't want to have progeny because they don't want they, they, they want to continue that to the next generation to enjoy so they could protect it again except that they don't know what for they're going to have the progeny but here the point what he meant to say kasal they shall utterly die or they shall utterly perish the point over here utterly fail it meant to say in simple words emphasizing that their bodies are not grown up into grammatias neither their thought process is been looking if you're a grammatias you need to go and make disciples of all the nations that's what he said ang people bakor the choicest ones who should have been looking upon the time well communication of doctrine looking upon the time they should have erected the structure of becoming the disciples of the word of Lord God looking upon the time they should be such sort of a people but what you're able to find them they are being utterly failure that means they have not grown up to be grammatias neither they have built up a wall of fortification to look their life to be like Christ And therefore, they shall utterly fail. So, dear brethren, you haven't known the reason why you have reached your maturity. You haven't known the reason why you should get married. You haven't known the reason they should have a progeny for you. That may be in the physical realm. You may or may not have. Who cares about that? Because already the world has not been filled with population, but it has been filled with pollution extreme apostasy pollution parents know not why they have the children they do not even understand why they want to have the children 
They don't realize the discipline given to the children or they are bounded to give to the children. They simply think like dogs and pigs, they also will have the children progeny. So we're not talking about the physical realm, we're talking about the spiritual realm. Every believer should have been grown up to become like a grammatius. They should have a thought process like a grammatius. They should have gone and make disciples of all the nations like a grammatius burden. The burden of Matthew 13, 52, the burden of Matthew 28, 18 through 20, the great commission of my Lord, but you people are far away. You don't even have your viewpoint in that. And yet you want your progeny. What for you want your progeny? So that he could be more worse than you, as he said in the book of Matthew 23. You go from north to south, east to west, you get a convert. When you get a convert, you make him to be more worse than you. That's what you're trying to get your progeny. What you're going to make him more worse than you. Not giving him proper training, not giving them proper learning, not giving them proper understanding of this life. So what eventually they happen? They tend out to become failures. The way have judges records, the new generation which has come, they do not know who is Jehovah Elohim. Such will be the fate. In those days, there was no king. Everyone wanted to be as they thought could be good in their own eyes. They continued to do that business. That's what they're trying to do today as well. But every believer is called now to be a king, a king who can manage his affairs, a king who can make Christ the Lord of God to sit upon his throne and to reign, a king wherewith he can be given to have his opinion only through the word of Lord God to reign, not any other's opinions. And what it will be eventually? Go and make disciples. People are perishing. Go and make disciples of all the nations. People are not my Christ. They're dying. They're perishing. If it is a death in your own family about a youth, how much you weep and wail? We should have been for you in the process of making the next life to the next generations. Then how much more it will be weeping and wailing whenever we look and consider the standards of these people who ought to be abiding for Christ or who have to be saved in the knowledge of Christ, they're perishing. You know, whenever you wake up after your sleep, the first thing you should ask to God the Father, Father, what is the score? And you might ask, what is that score? The death rate. You have given me having to be lie down in peace as you fulfilled to say that word in Psalms 4.8. You have given me no harm from any side. I am completely relaxed, having a state of peace to experience in my life. To have a state of your blessings to experience in this life, I am so much relaxed. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Though there is anything against me, I fear no not, because you are there with me. So all these things you have given, so I am completely relaxed, totally relaxed. There is nothing of a pain in my heart. So Lord, you gave me such sort of a good sleep, and now I wake up. Just I want to look, Lord, what is the score, the score what it should be. How many souls have been dead and you haven't troubled me, O oh Lord, on that? How many souls? But you know what you ask the Lord God when you wake up? Father, thank you for the good sleep you have given us today night. Today also you protect me. Today also you guide me. Let no harm come to my house. Let no harm surround me. <laughs> But you're not realizing how much harm you are. And when you love to ask, get up and ask your score, what will be a score? How much you have grieved, Lord God, the Holy Ghost? How much you have squelched, Lord God, the Holy Ghost? That will be a score. How much you are negligent enough not to think upon Bible doctrine in the night? Your reigns should be instructed by Lord God doctrine. And the reigns which you're going to instruct, they should train up your body for doctrine. That's what he says in the book of Psalms. Night, O Lord, your doctrine is taught through my reins. When I sleep, they communicate to me. Because you are in out of fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, dope addiction, drug addiction, lustful patterns of the old sin nature of this life. The parents are not worried about the children. The parents are not even worried about to ask what they're doing in this life. What is the purpose of this life? What is the aim of this life? Not to sit and discuss with them. Day by day you think it, that I will do and achieve like procrastination, but though ten, 10 or 20 years may pass down, a decade or two decades may pass down, the guy will be the same. There will be no change at all. 
because he doesn't have the vision of his life. And if every believer doesn't know that their body is to compare to Lord God in this world and say, who is like my God, as he claims over there in First Chronicles chapter 17, then if my God is a man who is going to make your thought process to be like a disciple, whose work is to be like a thought process in this church as a disciple, and grow up into grammatias and go and make disciples of all the nations, then you have a purpose, then you have a vision, then you have a meaning. So what is that meaning? Take up your Bible, learn it, take up your Bible, read it, take up your Bible, write it, take up your Bible, Bible, become like a grammatist, take up your Bible, master it. This is a very sad thing for us to note. Even the people who would love to take and go for Jerusalem trips, saying that we go to give Jerusalem trips for this, for this rate, for that rate. <coughs> And when we try to put a verse of Second Timothy 4.12 emphasizing about Demas, they are not even, uh, they, 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 they're shocked to say, many people don't know about this verse, but these are the people, they're carrying the other ones to Jerusalem to say that we will show you the place where Christ our Lord our God was. We will make you to have eight days or nine nights in that place, or, or eight nights and nine days in those place. You need to charge to pay for a so-and-so money, and we will show you what is Jerusalem. And these people, they themselves do not know what is there in the Bible. For example, the name Demas, they said they don't know what is this name Demas in the Bible. You know, so sad it is, so pathetic it is. So you have a vision in your life. What is that vision? Go and make disciples. How? When you should know the word of Lord God, who is like God, if anyone could claim the first thing of you in the pictographical representation, your thought process to be renovated, he said. And having that thought process, he said now as a disciple, as a Lama stick, as the shepherd who goes to take you and train you up, that's what, if I am your God, different from all the ones on this earth, because there are no gods apart from him, there is none else beside God of Yehovah Elohim on this earth. Because what a guards you are, they are vain imaginations, their own man-made works. So he knows very well there is none other. So if my thoughts are the thoughts like the heaven and your thoughts like the thoughts of the earth, so you cannot compare. So what are the thoughts of the heaven? He said, though the heaven and the earth will vanish off, my word, my commandments, what I have given, they abide forever. Isaiah 51 in verse number 4. So having these thoughts of doctrine, he says, every believer should grow up into grammatists, joined as disciple in the Lord God. So your body and your vision, if it has been saying to the world that I have been born in Christ or born again in the Lord, then your very work is renovate your thinkings like grammatias. Don't be like this man who takes the people to Jerusalem and he says that many people don't know about this verse as if he could know it or not. Demas, who loved the present evil world and left me. That's what Paul writes in Second Timothy 4. There are many great names in the Bible which many people might have not known. Then how would you know that? Only when you're becoming to be joined as a disciple, taking up your time to learn the word of Lord God. If your body is not been associated for discipleship program, then he says over there in Lamentations 3, 4, your flesh and your skin, they become tired. It is not old, but tired. Therefore, you don't have your purpose of life. You become slothful. You become slumber like the one talent guy who digged and kept in the soil. You don't dare enough to dig and take the great things of the Bible. But he would say, who is interested in exegesis? Who is interested in the depth talk of the word of Lord? Who is interested in such and such? If you have some milk, if we have some rituals, if we have some conventional Christianity, that's enough and we will continue our life to be blessed there. We will continue our life to be blessing there. That's what they think. But dear brethren, this is not. The right Christianity is to learn the word of Lord God. To go and make disciples when you grow up into grammar. Yes, that's the only way of the right Christianity in this church age. Don't simply think that we will be in such a such process of this life, emphasizing weekly ones to the church and doing this and doing that. You are absolutely old or your, your flesh and skin has been vanished. The man who stays vigor and valor till to the end of this life is purely the one who has been burdened with discipleship program. His vigor and valor and strength is from the Lord God. That's what we find over there in Second Samuel chapter 22, verses 34 and 35, saying that he makes the, the, the place under my feet to be widened so that I shall not slip. And then he says in verse 35, saying that he is going to train up my hands and particularly my fingers for the battles of the Lord. 
Why you know? Because now the flawless way of Yehovah has become your way. He has set you free from every trial, every circumstance of the details of life, so that you are no longer interested to claim to God the Father, Lord, I need this, I need that. The only thing which you need to pray to the presence of Lord God the Father, Lord, strengthen me to do your work. Lord, strengthen me to go and make disciples. Lord, strengthen me, develop me, so that I could grow up into grammatias and enrich and run your word, learn your word from Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, and that each and everything which easily faints in my mind or in my soul, Lord, I I just want to keep aside so strengthen me in that you will not ask for your food you will not ask for your clothing you will not ask for your shelter you will not ask for anything including the right women or the children you know why Lord God the Father knows how to provide you how to guide you how to lead you and how to make the things that could that which could work out for the will of Lord God the Father they will walk into your life because there will be an association for you to become the will of Lord God the Father Purely it will be the grace of Lord God, how he trains them up, how he leads them up to come to your life. They will not be by any chance saying that by accident I found them, no. God the Father also trains them up, leads them up so that they could do the work of Lord God and there is no need for you to pray for anything, stupid things. The prayers of great apostle 1 in Ephesians 1 or Philippians 1 or Colossians 1 emphasizing Lord enlighten the spiritual eyes, let they could happen to realize the spiritual eyes, let they could know the real importance of having a true prosperity in life is nothing but to have a great joy, great joy growing up in wisdom more and more as you increase more and more in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, conforming to the image of Christ. That's the real prayer which you need to pray. But stupidly, you are having a great sleep in night and saying, Lord, I woke up. And you don't even ask the score. The score of what you should ask, how many souls have been dead, the Lord. But you gave me sound sleep. You gave me perfect sleep. Because doctors also would say, if you don't sleep well, you're going to have such and such sickness. But who is who can able to sleep when the souls have been perishing in such a manner. In the incident of Moses, he lifted up the serpent, brazen serpent. In the incident of Phanas, he goes to kill them with a javelin so that the plague could be stopped. In the incident of David, when he put the people to be numbered, he falls into the hands of the living Lord of a God. That is, they cannot relax. They cannot go to be in the process of saying, let these people perish. No, they are acting instantly. Phanas, the son of Elias, acted instantly. Moses was informed by Lord God to rise up a brazen serpent. He acted instantly. He was not negligent in the work of Lord God. So anyone who does the work of Lord God negligently, Jeremiah 48 10 emphasizes these are the cursed ones. So in order to be alert, in order to be quick, in order to be very swift, what it is, you shall not have tiredness in your flesh. You shall not have the things pertaining to be calling as in your skin, having not the vigor and valor of doctrine. So what it has to be every time, it has to be the process of what you can call every time the knowledge of Bible doctrine. That's what your driving force has to be. The principal theme has to be every time knowledge of Bible doctrine. So dear brethren, if you are not being driven by the knowledge of Bible doctrine, he says over there, old is nothing but your body is not being in the process of making disciples. So when your body is not in the process of making disciples, simply the word meant to say what you are tired. And you go to check up with your doctors for your tiredness. The solution is not there. The solution is with the word of Lord God. Make up your body to be the disciple of Lord God. Like Caleb, you can tell the word. Though you are 85, he said, he said he has in him the vigor and valor like 40. That's what the right will of God the Father is for us. Like Caleb, you should be to the Lord God. Like Caleb, you should be occupied in the will of Lord God. But people are still stupidly looking and thinking for the standards of this stupid life, saying that you have reached your 40, then what? You have been reached almost all the age where it could be 
for slacking of your strength stupid the age of 40 is the real vigor and valor of age because when the things pertaining to the ministry calling of moses he was at the age of 40 now the next 40 years he's been trained the next 40 years from 80 to 120 he's been serving the lord you know when you reach this age 40 many people got married at the age of 40 in the bible so you can look for example isaac the son of Ab uh, the son of abraham they got married at the age of 40 and you can look upon how beautiful it is that lord god the father could bless them and use them but your thinking has been corrupted you know why god the father had a vision and a purpose for their life the vision the mission and the purpose of their life is to simply make them to be disciples for the lord or in return go and spread the good news of the lord god through abraham then then isaac and then you can know the word called to be israel how it has been spread if it were not for the standards of their life dedicated for the word of lord god having the mission and purpose of the word of lord god then we wouldn't have known today this god but we know very well how god the father could give us to become known through his saving work of christ on the cross saying that none should be perished and giving for us the information about the old testament it's a case study for us the people who rejected lord god how they have been put to death he says in first corinthians they were as an example for us the same thing for us he gives us an example so that now they at least couldn't serve lord god in such vigor and valor but they that are not the people through them i will make them jealousy as he claims over there in the book of romans so now our real life begins to serve as he said before they could call i hear them before they could tell or ask i could answer them such is the fate for us because you are given the old testament as an example the failures of them to overcome and make up your life to be in the new testament as per the demands of the word of lord god but the sad part is we are not able to walk like the true christians in the lord we are not able to learn from the failure of the past dispensational believers we are not able to wake up. So what might be the reasons you need to sit and analyze? The reasons of your failures. The logic is very simple over there. The, reason, the, the, reasons, the, re, the reasons for your failures. The logic is very simple. Because you are tired. You are tired in the sense your body is not disciple oriented to the Lord. So he says over here in Isaiah chapter 40, in verse number 30, They shall utterly fail. Who? The youth. The choicest part being determined after examination, they shall become kashel, kashel. Why? The body is not grammatious, neither the body is having a vision for Lord God to go and make disciples. Therefore, they utterly fail. That's what your life is. Lamentations 3, 4. Just remember that. So he says, But they that wait upon the Lord God, that is, from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, whose delight and desire is found only in the word of Lord God. That's the word called to be kava. Wait in the sense what? They have their desire in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Therefore, dear brethren, in Proverbs chapter, great chapter number 8, he emphasizes beginning with verse number 7. My word for my mouth shall speak the truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse thing in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth, and write to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction, and not silver, you know, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to the wisdom." That's the great thing over here when he says for us to analyze in Isaiah 40, 31, they that wait upon the Lord, cover who the people will wait, having great joy in Christ, having great joy in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. These are the ones who shall wait for the Lord God. They have a great desire in their body to have a great expression of joy. That's the meaning in the Greek called Makarian believer. Whenever he uses the word Makarian, blessed is the one who does this, blessed is the one. The Matthew chapter 5, you come across that word Makarian. What does it mean to say? What? He is 
though on the world he is not independent he is not dependent in the world but is independent of the world because his complete provision dependency comes from whom from the lord and savior jesus christ such a believer is called macarian though he is alive in the world he is independent of the world he do not expect anything from the world because he knows very well that it has to be only the provision of god such a believer is called macarian such a one is called to be kava they that wait upon the lord god and what they do when they wait upon the lord god from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun they have only one thing in their life to enjoy saying that i will have my pleasure in the knowledge of bible doctrine that's it i don't have any other pleasure on anything else on this earth only the knowledge of bible doctrine the thinking of my christ is my life john 6:38 therefore without fear forsaking everything you follow the lord my god luke 5:8 through 11 so that you can go on to catch many varieties of fishes of men that's the meaning of your life we have been walking and not having this great mission of life in the lord we are not understanding this life according to the standards of the will of god the father we are just becoming vanity because you think tiredness is in your flesh the tiredness is in your flesh because your flesh is not dedicated to be a disciple no doubt you may go to any number of doctors and try to prove what is deficiency what is this what is that all your reports and all your scan things but the word of lord god simply emphasizes saying that since your body is not dedicated to be a disciple to the lord god no matter however best reports you may get it says still you will be having tiredness in you which cannot be rejuvenated by drinking your revital drinks it cannot be done by such and such process on this earth the only process that you can come back and do it is by only simple method and that simple method is to take up your cross every day follow my christ luke 923 which emphasizes joining as disciple growing up into grammatias matthew 1352 because you have a great commission in the lord god's work the purpose and the will of lord god the father matthew 2818 through 20 going and making disciples of all the nations so that you can prove to the world saying that who is like my god that is what your real life is who is like my god when he says the thought process in your life it should be disciple oriented the thought process of going and making disciples of all the nations grown up into grammatias such is the only way of your life on this earth and you don't have any other thing apart from that on this earth to be occupied for so dear brethren here you look again emphasizing the point saying that they that wait upon the lord shall renew what do they renew they once again come to build back the fallen fallen walls of fallen things or how they build up they build up the wall of fortification now to be firmly established as a disciple that's what we find over there to open up their mouth as discipleship in revelation chapter 3 verses 1 through and following emphasizing your works are not been found perfect before me not even one therefore strengthen the things that have gone so that even you will lose the things which are there for you so the things that have been left over strengthen them so that's the meaning called to be as renewing so they go on to the process of building a wall of fortification to such an extent in the thought process of life that they're going to become disciples so what they renew they renew their coach strength as a grammatias you have to build up a wall of fortification since such sort of a coach strength has been demanded from you or if it has been in in you then the logic is very simple from the life of this chameleon nature you need to use that power to become the power of god so such is the word what we can find over here emphasizing called to be renewing the strength it is not all strength or a strength of gabor man it is a strength what you can call as coach strength the strength which should have been in you like the chameleon nature but now transform it to become the strength of the knowledge of bible doctrine 
they shall mount up with wings. That is, they will ascend. The Hebrew word Allah meant to say what now they fix their eyes like a disciple to the Lord. And the wings, what have been called over here, they make up their body renovated in Christ. Your body itself is like a wing helping you to fly. Why? Because your body is now renovated like Christ. And how you go, he said, like an eagle. The word eagle over here is called to be Nasser, meant to say what? which is a large bird having the uh, having the one as a bird of an eagle in the four cherubims or the four beasts so here you're going to have your vigor and valor your thought process being renovated as per the standards of the word of flood card as eagle and he said they shall run for what they run against any pressure in this life they have been fixing upon the vision and the mission of the lord god to be the priority they shall run and they shall not be weary. What is that? They breathe out at the point of death. So they shall not breathe out at the point of death. That meant to say what? They will not fail in erecting the thinking of Christ on this earth. And then he said, they that walk. And that is, they go on to become the process of disciple into grammatias. And they don't faint. That is the same word faint, what has been called over here as fixing their eyes to open up their mouth as doctrine unto the Lord. So they shall not, they shall walk and not faint. They shall run and not be weary. That is when they found the true meaning of this life on this earth, they go on to be against any pressure. They come to renovate the standards of this thinking on this earth. So dear brethren, the true life which has been given for us in this church age, Still, how many days more we are, we are still lacking behind? Because we have been told sickness at the cost of becoming old when your flesh and skin is not being used for the glory of the Lord. And who is like my God to whom you will compare him? If you are still like the devotees called to be Sebamai rather than Yusabian, are you really devoted to the Lord God? The world also claims they have their devotees. But they are not called over here to be the devotees of such Sebomai standards, religion-minded standards, but relationship-minded standards of devotees called to be Yusubiyan to the Lord. So, yet how many days more you still want to die in your sickness rather than enlarging your feet? Strengthening your fingers for the Lord's battle, walking in the flawless way of God. And not able to become the standards of what you can call to be taught by the Lord God, to know his covenant and to be a witness for his covenant. Though God the Father gives us such great relaxation to lie down in his presence. To become the will of Lord God the Father, to become his presence. Though you have been given such sort of a great life to become in his presence. And yet you are not relaxing in his glory. Dear brethren, it's a great failure on our part what we are going through in this church age. In spite of giving to us the prayer of Paul's and our privileges with the completed can of scripture, we are not able to become that which has been called to be in the sight of the Lord. So dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too short and the responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. So which way you want to go, you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Spirit leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. So with our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those of the third Christ, without hope and without eternal life. Inaudible telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour. That's the moment itself. You shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for so very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest man is to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine. That with you shall learn to abide the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the past to teach us the greatest man is to care us for Thorn Bagan. Herald the word in season out of sin because the diamond from my witnesses where it have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in well infinity we follow the Bible in our hands. The number two diamond from my witnesses are here. Us. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not only besides nature, the entire entirely costly witnesses and what is our work, 
Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost, led us to the praise of His glory. In His matchless marvelous Infinitely divine Holy Father, being grateful and thankful to the time, the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to learn your valuable truth. We pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to enlighten, to challenge, and to bless us by this message, so that the covenant which you have made with us, we could be a testimony for the being taught by you, to be your glory on this earth, for the praise of your standard, which you have given for us to prove to the world, who is like my God. In Christ, my first prayer, most precious name, we pray, Father, the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and the challenge us by this message. In Christ's name, we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.